G'day, it's Robbie Regain. Well, today we're going to make up a, a mount for this Hilda 400 watt rotary grinder so that I can use it in the tool post on the lathe as a tool post grinder. Now, I think this should be an excellent machine for that. Um, it's got everything going for it, variable speed, 400 watts. This is the unit I got from Banggood on appraisal and it's got a 10 out of 10. It's an excellent machine. So, how are we going to make the mount? Well, the big benefit of this type of unit is it's got an alloy nose on it. I presume you could put a hand grip on there, one of those screw-up type ones, to make it more useful. And we're going to use that to mount the, the unit. And we'll mount it in exactly the same fashion, basically, as I used with my little pencil air die grinder. Here's the pencil air die grinder and here's the mount. It's a very very simple mount and we're just going to make a bigger version of this and then the little die grinder goes in like that and it just clamps up on the nose. That's all you need. That's all you need, and you don't need some humongous great big thing like I've seen some people make. That'll be plenty rigid enough. So we'll make up a, bit, a bigger version of this to go on there. Now the collar on this is 14 mil deep. So that's the, the minimum we can go. You could go thicker if you've got thicker metal. Now I look through my old scrap metal and there's only one piece of metal I've got that will do the job and that is this it's an old railway line dog plate railway line sat on there and the spikes went through to hold it all together and you can see I've used some of this before this is pretty hard stuff that is very hard steel but it's, it's, it's machinable and um, it'll do the job so what we will do is we'll cut out uh, that uh, that adapter out of this, we'll use the bandsaw, do most of it and then finish off by hand. And it's exact thickness, is, it's exactly 14mm thick, so how lucky is that, eh? So, alright, we'll get on with it. The first thing we have to do is, of course, measure up how big we need to make this, because what we're going to have to do, is we're going to have to cut it, and then we're going to have to mount it in the forward jaw chuck, uh, to drill the centre out. It's a pretty simple process, but basically first thing you have to do is put a drill in your rotary tool so that we can line everything up and see exactly how big everything's got to be. Now we put the drill in the chuck, line up everything to position where the, the grinder will sit, give itself enough clearance and then we measure up for the section that goes in the, the, uh, the tool post we allow enough depth to go under it, enough through width and basically we just take a few measurements so that we can then calculate exactly how much metal we need to cut up and draw a little plan for it. Simple. Okay, here's the measurements for mine. It's 18 deep in the tool holder, 56 long in the in the tool holder, 16 up and 16 down will give you enough clearance to clamp around the the throat here. 59 deep will give you enough to go right through and allow for a pull down bolt which will go in here. And if you add this to this to this, you can see the depth is 50. The finished article will finish up looking a bit like this. That there will be thin up here, thick down here. The bolt will go through here and will slot through there. And that will allow the thing to pull together. Simple, simple, simple. So the thing now is to uh, start cutting. Now, once we've cut it out, the next step will be to mount it in the tool post holder and then we put a drill in the chuck in the uh, lathe chuck and we'll mark center by driving the, the carriage into the drill 
so we'll the drill centre. We'll then take it out of the torque post, put the forward jaw chuck on the lathe, mount the forward jaw chuck up with this in it and that on the centre line, drill it, and then we'll bore out our hole to 36.42 mil diameter. We're nearly there. Then we drill and tap for the, the cap head cap headed bolt to go through and then we slid it at the very end. Job done. Okay, let's get on with it. This is where one of these little band saws comes in handy. Makes it pretty easy to do this sort of work. Otherwise you'd have to use friction discs and that would be a lot more difficult to align everything properly. Note that this bandsaw cuts dead square. Now if you want to know how to do this, set it up, just watch some of my older videos on this subject, alright? But it's, uh, it's possible. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, to keep this simple, I'm not going to use the mill. Uh, well, the milling's a slide that I would normally put on those slaves because I don't have a proper mill. We're just going to use the tool post and a fly cutter. Now, the main thing is when you set this up, clamping it up, make sure that you get the point of the cutter against the face of the job and put an indicator on the side of the carriage and take a reading the full way across to make sure that it's the same reading at both ends. I mean, this is perfectly set up. This is a zero right through. Just, you know, don't trust your eye. This is how you would do it. You measure here and here. And when they're both exactly the same reading on the carriage, you're good to go. Okay? Once again, these is where these little magnetic indicators are, are great. You can make these up as well also. So look on my old videos, you'll see how to do this. There's a web page I put up on this. These are invaluable if you're doing any milling on the lathe or even drilling. It's great to be able to just put them on and read off the rail. Okay, let's get on with it. Right, now we're doing this with a fly cutter because you won't be able to get on the centre line with a, a slot mill with a regular tool post. You're always going to be off centre a bit. That's just the way they are. And uh, you're going to have to use a bigger type cutter than a, uh, an end mill or a slot mill. So you go fly cutter. Now, you're not going to get a perfectly centred radius on the cut, but that won't matter. In fact, you can clean it up with a file later if you want to. I mean, this isn't the crown jewels we're making. This just is something to hold this grinder. What we want to do is grind this back and on both sides and make the, the bit that goes in the, in the tool post. Now, as I was showing you here, mark it with text to pen so you can see how far you've come with your cut. And once you've done that, then you need to mark on the carriage so you know how far to, to go each time with your cut. So I just wipe it off. I'd wipe it off with a bit of petrol and just mark it with a texture pen, you know. You could put a magnet there if you've got clearance. I can't because the gibbs are going to hit it. So I'd, I'll just mark this with a, with a texture pen in a second. And uh, that'll uh, let you just cut through and come back and get, just go to your reference point each time. You lock down the carriage each time you, when you do a, a cut. Half a mil cut is plenty, I think, for this sort of arrangement. You, this will be a slow job. Just go slow, you'll be right. So you lock the carriage, half a mil cut. Use a texture pen mark. Uh, measure your, your advance on either a magnetic indicator like this or a mounted dial indicator, or you could use the graduation on the hand wheel if you've got one. And, and just, where you go. Just go slow and you'll be fine. The other alternative is that you could cut through this with a hacksaw and save milling altogether, but you're never going to get as good a job with a hacksaw, so, you know, why do that when you can mill it? So let's, let's just uh, do a pass on it to show how easy it is. So we'll do 0.3 of a mill cut just to start off with. 
just feel your way in. If it's uh, too much for the tool post, just bury your cat either way, all right? drift so just keep at it and you'll get there okay I'm cutting this out 0.4 of a mil, 0.5 is a bit too much. Uh, just do whatever your tool post can stand, no rush. And you can see we're about halfway there and it hasn't taken that long at all really. So yeah, I'm also cutting it dry. I've just checked to see how the cutter's holding up and no problem, so no point cutting it wet if you can do it dry. Uh, you can see your marks a lot easier when it's uh, dry. At, uh, if it's blunting your cutter, well, just put a bit of lube on there. All right, we'll keep going. Turned out pretty right, considering we did it without a mill, and uh, yeah, not too bad. One side to go.